come gently this whole thing upsets me this whole thing so messy don't tempt me if i said then i'm in the shit if we're going up i'll just turn it out a little bit hope that it's enough i never got time to celebrate bring me up too much so you know what's happening in a dish i'm in a counterfeit never cause a drama here still be the bigger bitch i'm just doing my lips i'm doing chatty shit we are no babies on my life is where i got retouched as a wishing list oh baby then i got wavy i shit you know it's calling me stacy but my name's Haley. something like that a little recap man because i'm taking it I literally filmed an entire video. I was very hyped. I was very comfortable with the things that I was saying. And then, boom, before you know it, every bit of footage is gone. Um, it's getting a bit like out of hand to be just a coincidence now. But one thing about me is I don't cry over spilt milk. So we're going to refilm it. Maybe new things will come up that I never spoke about before, but it's to the point where I can't even, like, the video's there, but I can't even view the video. Anyway, so the title of this video is The Advice I Wish I Was Given When I Was Younger. Um, I remember some of the points. I remember two of the first that ones. We'll see where it takes us. I'm Tally K. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. I'm an artist, a producer, if you've never come across me, but honestly, you'll probably come in here. If you haven't come here from a YouTube algorithm suggestion, um, you've come directly from my social media accounts. So <laughs> you probably know who I am at this point. Um, but if you don't, and you've come from the YouTube algorithm, um, yeah, I'm Tandy K. I'm a um, producer, I'm an artist. I do all things music related and like run small, small e-commerce. So that's me. Welcome. Hello. Hope you're all doing well. And um, yeah, now I'm going to get on with the okay, video. So we're going to start with explaining the context behind this video. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. But what I want to say, right, is that me as an individual, I have suffered quite a lot of trauma early on in my childhood, going into my teen years. So the purpose of this video is based on the trauma that I've experienced. I don't want to make this whole video depressing um, and triggering and to have to put trigger warnings. So what I would advise is that if you want to maybe learn about some of my experiences, backtrack to some of my other videos, for example, um, the video where I'm explaining the creative process, so it's like three heads and the thumbnail, that kind of experience explains, sorry, some of the things I went through when I was younger. But the purpose of this video isn't to simply recollect experiences. Although that can be beneficial for some, for me, I would rather not, you know, air out all my business <laughs> on a YouTube video. But I can allude to things that I'm comfortable speaking about. On top of that, I also really, really, really do want to give you guys some insight into the things that helped me. And that could probably help you given the times that we're living in. First thing I would say, and this was actually like I think like number two or number three when I originally made the video, but in this instance, we're gonna put it as number one. So this is really crucial, and this is no people's roles, and I'm pretty sure you've heard this like multiple times in school when you're going through something difficult. They're like, you can always talk to the teacher, or, like talk to your parents, but unfortunately. People don't always have that confidence one to talk to teachers. If you've had a bad experience with teachers or one or two teachers that will impact your perception on all of the teachers, the likelihood of you going to them is slim, right? Not every school has counsellors or counsellors that care. Not everyone has a relationship with their parents where they can just go and tell them everything. So that is where, you know, worst case scenario, you can't talk to anyone and maybe you could can talk to your friends but you almost feel as if like they wouldn't understand or you don't know if they're gonna then go and tell their parents who will then go and tell your parents you know so that is when i would say it's so important to know people's roles like literally i don't know how to explain it better without giving like such a bleak example but it's like knowing who your friends are you know, don't fall into like fake friendships, um, unsupportive people in your corner, because there are a lot of people that you're going to come across in school in particular, in college, there's a lot of people you're going to come across. And if you feel iffy vibes off people, 
if you feel like you can't trust as in like i'm speaking more now specifically about friends because even if you know teachers aren't the best teachers that they can be for you like even if that is the case teachers and the school system is is meant to be supported they have a duty of care so you have a duty as the student to accept their responsibility of the duty of care they have to provide to you this is about what you can do to not feel alone if you're going through something if you feel like you can't talk to your friends or you you know it's difficult for you to talk to your parents you know a close family member cousin auntie uncle you know just know people's roles that really helps and maybe the stuff that i was experiencing most kids my age weren't experiencing that so therefore i thought okay maybe these are like slightly like more grown problems maybe that's what affected me being able to speak so freely about the things that i was going through but then you know with time as i started to speak more to my friends at the time about what was going on then when it came to like problems i was experiencing in college i had no problem going to teachers and saying yeah this is what i'm going through be aware of the systems that exist if they don't exist in your school then again like i said building that confidence to be able to go to the teachers and say listen i think that um, the school would benefit from the system i'm noticing that a lot of people my in my age bracket in my year in my class as well as me are uh, experiencing a lot of difficulties in regards to this is there something that can be done about that that's why you have you know peer mentors that's why you have head boy head girl like all these people like they, those are the people that you can also take your grievances to because they have been nominated as the individuals to kind of represent the student population so this is why i say it's really important to know um people's roles when you're growing up don't fall into the habit of thinking like everyone in the world is like toxic and terrible and no one's going to understand because i guarantee you at least one person out there is going to understand what you're going through and you just need to build up the confidence to explain what is going on and seek that help because it can't come from anyone else other than yourself having hobbies and appreciating them whilst they're still easily accessible so i spoke about this before my old footage so i have been a dancer for like many many years i never competed um in like a dance competition well we used to have like in-house competitions but we i never competed in like a you know like a national competition or like a london-based competition or anything like that and i think sometimes when you say that to people they think oh that means you're like a rookie or something or like you don't you're not as like um trained or qualified but at the end of the day like competitions are really expensive they're not completely free on the back of the dance teacher or the dance organization you have to pay a lot of money to be in dance schools that compete so that's a whole nother thing because when you compete yeah you're tra you're paying for the travel to the competition you're paying you know for the competition itself you're paying for the use of the music you're paying for several different things it's not just as clear cut as right well you can you know get your leg in arabesque so let's take you off to swanage this is probably the same as you know competing in a football club and com like national nationally yeah and like not um as a child and not playing um just like friendlies in your back garden just because things aren't at competition level doesn't mean you can't still do it i have a lot of knowledge of dance i you know teach dance now i want to continue teaching dance and teach more and more people and i've done all of that off the back of not ever having competed in a national competition in my life but you know i go to dance festivals every year where i can we used to do shows at my dance school annually or like biannual annual shows and you know for me that's a like that's more representative of a skill set i don't know like i think co competitions are good but i think that being able to showcase what you've been working on the whole year to your friends and family is priceless and I, you know, I also did exams, so I'm not just, do you know what I mean? I'm not just some rookie who, you know, did a few, like, dance classes when they were, like, five, like, ballet when they were five, and then, you know, it was like, yeah, I'm going to teach. Like, I've done exams, I've got my, all my certificates, you know, I've got all my shoes from when I was, like, five years old. Like, I literally have been doing this for a very long time. When you have a talent, right, and you need to get that support, rushing and throwing your kids into certain things, 
might actually damage them more than you think if you are the parent who's like no my child needs to be doing da, 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 doing the things that an adult dancer for example would be doing because you want to be the one to push them into that and that's when you as an individual regardless of your age have to you know stand up for yourself and defend yourself and that can happen with any hobby not just with um dance not just with sports as well like it can literally happen with anything but this the point i'm trying to make is like when i got into university so then i picked up dance again and it was a lot cheaper to dance in university level but again like that's a university level not to say it's less it's still a good level but it's like it's a university like you have to be in the university to dance for the university team once you leave the university what are you going to do now you're going to have to now find a separate school you know you're gonna have to find a separate place to do what you want to do and like i said appreciate it whilst it's still available to you you know various schools have different teams if you can join different teams do that and that will also give you the momentum that even if you don't go to university like there are several you know small um studios in your local area where you can go and pick up classes this is specific to dance obviously I know about like for football there's like goals and stuff you can go and, and go with your friends there and stuff like that so there are ways that you can do things it's just a matter of a simple google search but when you're younger and you have those things available to you take advantage of your sports classes not every parent's going to be able to afford dance or football classes but if you can find that one-off lesson if you can find you know like what i do like teaching online like things like that for a discounted price and then you you know you save up the money to be able to learn those things it, it, it trust me like it, it pays off it really does it does um but yeah that's not i i'm using dance as my best example because i grew up dancing um but there are you could do that for so many different things um really really cliche right and i'm not gonna say if you jump off a cliff jump with them i'm gonna say simply don't do things that your friends are doing just because you don't want to feel left out now that applies to so many things and honestly i feel like i would you know have maybe have been able to like chop my trauma in half if i had had partaken in some of the things that my so-called friends were doing when i was younger and again i'm not going to go into detail about the kind of things i was doing use your imagination actually maybe don't use your imagination because then you'll presume that i did some really messed up things many would say these are like typical things that a child does like a teen does when they're growing up but it's not normal there's a difference between ex experimentation and having a problem and being a menace people say these days like if you feel a sense in your heart that's like i shouldn't go somewhere believe that if people are trying to like force you to go somewhere and you know in your heart that it's not safe my advice would be just don't go there and go home instead and, and be with your family where you know you feel safe be at home where you feel safe if you can go with other friends who you feel safer with like do that you know don't tap in and do what other people are doing who are your so-called friends just because you want to fit in and you don't want to be seen as like a social outcast because i guarantee you that the people who didn't go to that thing who maybe they weren't invited or simply like you know they turned it down or whatever the reason may be they didn't go and they turned out fine so what would make you know, what would make you think that if you didn't go to that one thing that you know you don't want to go to and that you shouldn't be going to what would make you think that you're not going to turn out okay because i used to like be allowed out like you know quite a bit but there were certain things that my mum was like oh this is too far but you know nine times out of ten maybe seven times out of ten like i could wiggle my way around it but then i remember on one occasion like i had done some really like messed up stuff i can't remember what i did quite a few like weird things and she had basically said to me like I would prefer that you don't go to this place and I was like why not she was like because I don't want you to go there and I'm like okay well I'm not going to argue with her because technically like I am like in trouble so I don't really you know like when you don't want to further your punishment by like being even worse so I was like okay let me just like comply and then 
my group of friends at the time was still putting pressure on me to come to this place and then I remember my mum and my brother actually saying like if they're your real friends then you know they it was it won't matter if you're not there because they'll understand you know the circumstances that led to you not being able to go there on this occasion and they'll realize that you'll be there for the next occasions you're still like young and lo and behold those people are no longer in my life so on that note i would like to end um this video i really hope you guys found it enjoyable i really enjoyed making it for the second time thank you guys so much for watching but yeah look out for more stuff coming your way um just like i do in every video because i'm annoying as hell uh drive through is still out on all streaming platforms my debut album got more um stuff coming as well so yeah we're just we're just pushing the music and stuff really thank you guys so much um for the support and home of you my debut single of 2021 um has now surpassed 2000 streams which i'm very grateful for so stay tuned on this youtube channel keep your eyes peeled subscribe as well like the video comment follow me on social medias and what have you and yeah guys thank you so much if you made it to the end of a real one and um yeah see you soon bye